Hello, my name is Richard Conrad, and I thought I would spend some time with you showing how I process through Star Tools and specifically um, Jim Misty's very excellent data of M31. Um, there are many, many different ways of uh, processing. Uh, workflows vary a lot depending on the image, on uh, what kind of uh, signal you've got. Uh, in this instance, uh, the signal is very excellent. Um, he's taken it with a CCD camera, and so we'll be loading it in through the LRGB. So we load the luminance first. Oh, we've got our, I've done the red twice, sorry. So we'll go to the green. You should make sure that you let each of these load completely before you click on to the next. So that that is completely finished before you click on the next. Okay, so uh, this is linear. Uh, it was Bayard. Um, it, it, they're all separate channels. Okay, so uh, it was Bayard, and it, it uh, is not white balanced. I don't know that for sure. I'm not sure how this uh, these images were stacked, but I'm going to choose this anyway. So that option I checked uh, indicates that the data is as virgin as possible, which Star Tools really likes. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click Auto Dev. Uh, that will stretch the image to pretty much the maximum. And uh, what it, uh, the purpose of this at this point is to show uh, our st stacking artifacts, okay, which we have to get rid of. Um, otherwise, Star Tools will interpret that as part of the image. Okay, so what I do at this point is I'm going to crop that out. Okay, something like that. Okay, so what I'm showing you so far are uh, pretty much mandatory uh, beginning workflow operations in Star Tools. Okay, um, secondly, uh, we're going to do um, what's called a wipe, which would be probably um, similar to Photoshop's gradient exterminator, and this is fairly important. It looks like there's a lot of gradients here. There is a color cast, however. Um, so I'm going to set the aggressiveness a little bit lower. I find 75 works generally generally well, but uh, and Dark Anomaly Filter. Um, all the artifacts that perhaps I didn't crop out or that are existing somewhere else in the picture, I'm going to ask Star Tools to ignore those. And a temporary auto dev, which will just basically stretch this image for me to show how I did. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And of course we can't keep that, but uh, Okay, so this is now that my resultant image, which is not uh, stretched properly. Um, I will do that. However, uh, my personal preference is I like the I like the galaxy flipped. I prefer that orientation. So rotate 180. Keep. Okay, so we go back to Auto Dev. Okay, so this is now 
redo global stretch. This is now without the cropping artifacts and um, the image wiped of gradients. And again, this is a full and absolute, um, this, this is um, a maximum stretch. So I'm going to try and modify that a bit. So we select regions of interest, uh, for instance, the galaxy, which includes a little bit of the sky, and see what that comes up with. Okay, um, I've experimented already, and I find that um, by doing a bit of a sliver here, we try to include some of the sky and a little bit of the core is uh, what I prefer. And this is totally up to the user, but it uh, changes, it, sorry, it, it uh, optimizes contrast and things within it. It's important to get this part of the processing done properly because it saves you a lot of time in the end. Okay, And uh, I like the halo. I personally like the halo in this and I also like the contrast and details that we can achieve here. Okay, so not, uh, not terribly happy yet. Okay, I'm going to try with that. It's a bit better contrast. Another way of doing this is uh, going back to rotate and rotating the galaxy so it is completely horizontal and highlighting the whole galaxy. That works too. Um, so this is again my personal preference. It's not necessary, but I like to desaturate this. Um, Star Tools works within the luminance uh, pretty much right up till near the end, uh, and um, but uh, it also includes some of the colors here. This isn't accurate of what you're going to achieve in the end. Uh, perhaps it's there just to give you a, a vague idea of what it might look like, but I find it distracting, so often I like to desaturate that. And I've been told by the developer, Ivo, that this does not affect anything. This is fine. Um, he has said, please don't play with the color until right before you denoise with tracking. Okay, so um, I want to see if I can... Um, dim the core a little bit and brighten the sky and also a bit more in, in the uh, sort of the galaxy halo. So to do that I go to the HDR module to equalize which will darken the bright parts and lighten the darker parts. This uh, is of course stretched too much but uh, I will be reducing that later on. Okay, next I go to contrast, dark anomaly filter raised a bit so uh, we're not sharpening details within noise grains. So I think that's an improvement. Okay, uh, also at this point I'm going to choose to bin the object slightly. Um, there is very little noise in this and it's not, strictly speaking, necessary. Uh, it helps a little bit. The problem is a star. This is taken with a lower resolution camera and so uh, any binning tends to s turn the smallest stars into squares. So, uh, But just for the sake of um, this video, it processes quicker if I do bin. So. 
I'm going to go to the 7% noise reduction, which really bins it by about 50 percent. Or I'm sorry, 100 percent. So it's half the resolution now. Your processor will be a little bit happier now. Okay, so I'm going to go uh, a step further now. I'm going to do a little bit of sharpening. And to do that, um, I don't want to sharpen the whole image. I just want to sharpen the galaxy. So I'm going to apply a mask to the parts of the galaxy I want to uh, increase sharpness. But I don't want to sharpen the stars. So I go back to the mask click Auto and Fat Stars, which are the majority of stars in our field, and that is the stars that appeared in the first linear data. And I want to subtract them from the mask that we just used. So I'm going to invert just to see how that went. And I'm going to grow that a bit. We want to try and cover um, halos and stuff of the stars so they also don't get sharpened. And this should be covered as well as that. Okay, we could be more picky, but uh, I'll leave it at that. So I'll put the mask inverted again. And now you can see the green is the area that the sharpening will affect. And this is the large scale setting, the large scale sharpening, which is uh, preferred at the beginning, as this increases um, probably general specific contrast. Okay, so that's improved. Okay, so I think I'm going to play around with the contrast module yet again, but this time I'm going to uh, select compensate gamma. So what this does is it uh, we, we still do a contrast like before um, and, and uh, on, on a fairly aggressive setting which uh, will also decrease uh, luminance and the composite gamma uh, bumps that up so we actually get um, a higher contrast. Uh, it's very finicky um, so it really depends on the image so there's a bit of experimentation that happens here. So that's obviously too much. So this is finally <coughs> the result that I settled on. And you can see that uh, it enhances the, the sort of local contrast uh, quite a lot. OK, with my mask already in place, uh, by the way, the mask does not affect um, HDR. Uh, you'll discover um, some of those details. Anyway, so I'm going to increase that contrast, uh, sorry, the, the sharpening yet some more. Um, the reason why I didn't do all the sharpening at the start is that uh, these modules tend to uh, piggyback off each other. Um, so a little bit of sharpness um, emphasizes the contrast. Uh, okay, so actually, sorry, I'm going to do something else. I'm going back into HDR and into the reveal, which basically looks at the brightest parts of the image and tries to uh, give you, um, optimizes the dynamic range. Okay, so in this one, it's uh, generally reserved for the core of galaxies. You can do it for anything that's bright. And by default, this is what uh, it's given us. Okay, so a, a little aggressive for my tastes. What I'm interested is pretty much in the details just around the core.
Okay, I like that. Uh, it's at the expense of, of the core a little bit, which is slightly blown out, but I'm going to fix that later, perhaps with a, a blur of some kind, but uh, I like what that's given us. Go into uh, sharpening, and we're going to go stay in large. <coughs> going to reduce the uh, smaller scale right now. I want to focus very much on on the contrast here in the larger scale, so I'm going to keep that. That's quite quite radical. It may be too much. Okay, so uh, maybe now go down to the smaller scale, medium. Okay, and I'm going to uh, get rid of scale 5. I find, with my taste anyway, scale 5 belongs more to um, the larger scale. And I find the more uh, you go in as far as the scale, large, medium, small, I like to move the mask fuzz down um, to protect the smaller stars more, not so much the larger, but uh, so that's what I've discovered. Okay. So I think uh, I like that. So I'm getting near to the end of the processing with this, and I'm realizing that I probably overdid um, this halo here, um, which uh, I just want to show you how you can improvise a little bit in Star Tools instead of starting over at the beginning. So um, I'm going to apply uh, the Life module. Okay, for starters, I'm w w what the life module does is it basically I, I will mask uh, an area that I want to keep um, or isolate, and anything that's not in green will be reduced. So uh, I'm going to make a new mask, and I'm going to uh, auto stars, and instead of selecting stars, I'm going to mask according to brightness. Okay, so it's going to mask everything that is brighter. So let's try that. Okay, so it's going to focus. It's going to isolate the area in green. Um, I want to uh, extend that a little bit more. Okay, and that's getting uh, pretty good. And I want to uh, deselect the stars uh, as much as I can. Again, uh, the linear stars. In this image, the linear stars are very, very apparent. Not, not always so. Subtract. OK, so I found with that setting, uh, it didn't reduce the stars quite the way I uh, had hoped. But let's try it anyway. Uh, the other option would be to select just stars in general and that would uh, also select the stars that were stretched uh, from the linear image. But we're going to try that anyway, see what happens. Getting rid of any obvious stars. Obviously I can't do them all. I really want to separate this galaxy from uh, from its background. Okay, so now having done this mask, I go into life, and the purpose of life uh, is to uh, basically uh, give back um, a certain 
glow, a certain light that um, diffraction takes away from. I can't go into those details too much because they're a bit beyond me. But um, so I'm going to go into the isolate area, and that is basically going to isolate this, and at the same time, it's going to apply a bit of a glow. Um, I prefer to limit that. So I push the area disk radius to the maximum, and this way it retains uh, more details. And that, again, is up to uh, the user. This takes a little bit of a time. So this is the result. Um, it's a little more uh, dramatic than I was uh, looking for, but uh, then we have the strength slider and this is pretty much what I'm looking for okay the next step and this can be done at any point um, it's the deconvolution module and uh, that basically does an inverse star mask um, and it deconvolutes the edges of the stars it also deconvolutes um, the main image and so it sharps, sharpens it in a way um, a little bit like bringing something blurry into focus um, something that's blurred say through just atmospheric disturbance and then uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a nice sharpening tool um, the main purpose of it is to sharpen the edges of the stars, and we'll see how that works. So I'm going to let it. Um, I'm going to let it do its own mask. So that's always an option here: generate mask automatically. Basically, does a linear uh, star mask uh, with a little bit of growth. So uh, you'll see what that is. Okay, to see if the settings are good, um, you can just highlight a portion of the image and it'll all render much quicker. So there's a slight sharpening of the galaxy and uh, the stars, but I can, uh, you can bump that up to the point where uh, it can uh, affect the stars negatively. I'm going to try that. So it, it's a slight difference, but uh, there is a difference there. Okay, so uh, this is about as far as I want to go um, until I apply the color. Um, so having applied uh, the color configuration, we then uh, do a denoise, and uh, one thing I forgot to mention, if you're not already familiar with Star Tools, um, is that uh, it goes through a process called tracking. Um, basically tracks the noise as the processing is going along, so that when you do finally go to the denoise process, it uh, is quite accurate in um, reducing what it's, it knows is noise. So um, what I'm going to do, it's going to keep that, and I'm going to go to color. First I'm going to clear the mask and I need to tell Star Tools what is the white balance for this. Um, I could simply mask the whole thing but there is some noise here and that affects um, the color configuration. So what I'm going to do is um, mask the galaxy at least the uh, brighter parts of the galaxy. Okay, so the highest signal, and this is usually the galaxy that you see in photographs. You don't usually see so much of the halo. So I'll grow that some more. I also um, 
often um, select stars as stars as a whole of all different colors average out to white. So that is usually the best method of achieving a good white balance. Uh, it doesn't work so well with this image, for instance, and I'm not, not sure why. So I'm going to subtract the stars from this. We'll go to color module, keep the mask, and I'm going to go to sample. Okay, so what I've selected, I've sampled it, and it's shown me what it has. It looks pretty good. I'm going to take that information, and I'm going to apply it the whole image. Okay, so uh, I pretty much like that. I'm going to do a few more adjustments and again at this point it's personal. Scientific color, keep that. This is what is accurate. Um, I'm going to darken the saturation to emphasize the blue on the edges a bit better. And not to make that too unnatural, I'm going to bring the general contrast, the general saturation down. Okay, so I'm going to keep that, and the final stage is uh, now to click track, stop the tracking, and we'll then do the noise reduction. Okay, so at this point you get a blur, and basically it's trying to determine the grain size or the largest size of um, of noise, and uh, so you basically are going to adjust this just until the point that you can't see the noise. Okay. So having binned it, we've already reduced the noise. So there's a little bit happening here. And so I'm going to uh, increase the grain size just a little bit above um, what is what I can see. I'm um, there's a lot to learn in the tracking module, and. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, focus on the detail in the actual galaxy. So I'm going to try that. So I'm going to go to uh, what I see is the noisiest area. Let's say here. I like that. And the denoise will now proceed fairly quickly as we've rendered just a small part. As you can see there's not a lot. And it's done a fairly good job actually. So I think I'm going to adjust the uh, scale correlation, uh, which basically uh, will increase the smoothness around the darkest parts of the image and then leave the brightest parts uh, less or more or less untouched. And let's see what happens if we reduce it by half. That's more or less what I'd like. I 
uh, what I should do is probably highlight uh, the contrast, so it'd be right here. Contrast of the light and the dark. Okay, so I like that. So that's the end of the tracking procedure, and that is basically our final image uh, beyond any uh, minor modifications uh, we'd like to make. And now a lot of these other, um, other modules are available for use. Uh, I can't go into uh, too many of them right now in detail, but I do want to see if I can shrink the stars slightly to emphasize the uh, galaxy, especially the uh, uh, the fainter bits a bit more. So I'm going to uh, reduce the stars and to do that you go back into mask. Um, this is no longer available, the fat stars, because it's, it's no longer a linear image. So we're going to select stars and this is by default and because I know this image I know that this is probably, this is also going to highlight um, bits of the uh, dust lanes and stuff which I, I don't want to affect so I'm going to decrease the sensitivity and I'm going to lower the threshold a bit so that we are catching the halos of some of those stars and this is just um, all about experimentation So upon seeing this, it looks generally fairly good. It hasn't caught everything, but that's uh, not terribly important at this point. Okay, so I'm going to just make a few modifications. Things I, I don't want to be affected. Um, there are halos around some of the bigger stars, which I have to manually adjust. And that's just naturally going to take a little bit of time. So. I'm just going to do a few. And not to spend too much time during uh, this video, I'm just going to show you what you can do. Um, again, the minor details like this can take some time, depending on uh, how detailed you really want to be. So that's the final result of my masking. Uh, it just took me a minute longer, basically. And I think the first thing I'm going to do uh, is reduce the saturation slightly in the stars, just so that it contrasts more with the galaxy. So back to color. I'm going to keep the mask and simply reduce this. Okay, and keep it. And now to reduce the star slightly, I go to the magic module and it will by default shrink them by one pixel. Okay, that's quite a quite a nice difference. Because I bend it down by half, um, I'm finding the stars lack some definition, looking a little bit like dust. Um, no way really of fixing that. I'm going to increase the mask to the stars by a pixel, see if that helps. Anyway, uh, if you do this particular image at full resolution, uh, you'll probably get a better result with the stars, but uh, again, that's a general, um, the general view of that, and uh, I think that I'll leave it at that. There is uh, another thing you can do if the background is too dark. Uh, you can raise the black point slightly by uh, going to the Develop module and Sky Glow. And you can increase that anywhere from 1% uh, upward to what you like.
Okay, so I think I like that. And you can save it. So I hope the video has been useful for you. Um, obviously, you keep in mind that uh, this is all personal preference. And uh, I wish you a good day. Cheers. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> there was one more thing that I'd said I would do, uh, and that's to work on that core a little bit. So this is a, a simple fix. Go to lasso and simply draw around that core, and we're going to smooth that out a bit. In the layer module, which is really another video in itself as to how all that works, um, it does have a simple function of uh, a blur. Okay, so filter kernel radius. I'm going to increase that. That's around the masked area. So the effect that that has. Yeah, I think that's adequate. Clear the mask. Yeah, and that's uh, that's my final result. Thank you.